All right, so process for replacing this multi-button cable that rides up on here on the iPad too. Um, I guess you could say it's a somewhat common problem for this cable to be cut during disassembly, remove, trying to remove the digitizer. Um, yeah, you got to be particularly careful with it if you do break them. Um, I've seen uh, videos that say that, you know, the iPad, it's done. You might as well just buy a new one or send it in and have it repaired by a <clears throat> professional and so forth. And Well, if you're this far into it, you might as well replace the cable. Um, the cables are, are not very expensive at all. Um, it's just time consuming to get in there and replace them. Um, this is what the cable looks like when it comes... Um, packaged. You can see there's several switches and so forth and there's some connections there that have to be made. Um, all of the uh, beige areas are just um, adhesive. They're, it comes you know already set up with adhesive and so forth. The trick with the iPad 2 is that there are two generations of these cables and so if you buy one it may or may not be the correct one. So so far what I've found, and I've only, this is only the second one that I've damaged of probably 15 of these that I've done, um, is the second gen cable, which is this one here, is the correct cable. And the first gen apparently is more rare. So whatever the case may be, the way you go about doing this, and I know it's difficult to see, but... Um, what you have here, the, the cable stretches from end to end here. Here's the, the final connection here. Um, and you can pry this up and it will pop off of there. A little bit of heat to this area here um, will enable you to peel this back off. This is just resting here with adhesive. And then it comes back to this connect comes back here to this connection. So to get this cable off, um, what you want to do is heat it up a little bit. And I use a, um, I use an Xtronic heat gun. It's more of a professional grade product. Most people probably don't have this, but um, you can use a hair dryer as well. If you have a real nice uh, heat gun like this, um, got a you know a soldering station basically I only run it up to 200 degrees to do all of the disassembly work on the iPad so don't damage anything so this piece here will just pry off sort of a it looks to be a sensor of some kind and then the adhesive here along this part of the cable will allow you to take that off so that comes back to here, which has um, a piece of tape around it. That takes care of that part of it. Next, there are um, a few screws to remove. There's a uh, retaining bracket right here. And then 
So you remove this, the on off switch is right behind it. There's another bracket here and this one um, is for the uh, uh, the volume switching. And so the switches, the physical part of the switches are beneath here, but so is the ribbon cable. And this, the actual electronic switches are here. So these are the locator holes for those, which the, uh, the cable buttons will actually fall right in there and help you locate it that way. And they're twisted up underneath. So the, the cable's here where my tool is, and then it wraps up underneath and faces outward towards the switches. And then the cable continues um, along here. This is another area you have to be a little careful of uh, when you're working uh, that you don't cut this because it can be cut here or it can be cut here as it makes the journey over the housing down to here and then back into the switch. So if you cut it here, which is what happened in this case, or back here, then all of this assembly has to come out. And up here is your main uh, power switch underneath this rubber grommet. So this comes out. It's got a little bit of adhesive on it. And there's two screws that hold in the mechanical portion of that switch, which again, the, uh, the cable wraps up underneath it. And it's got a kind of an interesting way of wrapping. Um, it comes out here, it folds down, it wraps back around the housing underneath and then flips up underneath the, the switch. So it's quite a process of um, turning back and forth again to uh, in order for it to be used and unfortunately it's so long that if you booger it up you're in for uh, some time to get in there and replace it. There's a lot of screws. I think uh, there's uh, four one, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, I seem to remember a sixth one somewhere, but you know, there's there's one right down here for this housing. This has to come out of the way so you can get back here into the switch. So I seem to remember there was one right here, but I, this model doesn't have it. So um, at any rate, there's a switch. There's a screw here and here and back down here. Once this gets out of the way, um, then I'll be able to get get to the rest of the cable. So here I'm just removing everything. Bracket for the power switch. Uh, the bracket assembly for the uh, volume switches as well. So there is uh, the underside of it. You can see there's a uh, these cables are just wrapping. For these, they're wrapping up from underneath and presenting themselves. And then there's a little rubber cushion here to set that in properly. Here is the back side of the mechanical switch, which rests into a cavity, um, and you. You want to make sure that that is seated properly before reassembly. And uh, here's the power switch. It has a groove in it. There is a, a small plastic, black plastic toggle here, which is the actual power switch. So you want to make sure that gets uh, sent back in there properly. And the power switch wraps up. You know, it's all part of the cable. It wraps up over the top of the bracket, whereas the uh, volume buttons wrap up from underneath. So we progress progressively remove this. And it's I think it's what I found that this is only the second one I've had to do was it's a little confusing keeping track of how all this folds. So taking some photographs um, and uh, maybe take the bracket off with all the switches and everything and then take it off here and then just start putting it back together uh, one at a time so that you're not uh, lost trying to figure out how everything rolls back together. Alright, so I've taken off the, the small metallic cover 
that was right here. It's over here now. So that's off. There was one screw that held it in, and that's that's our camera. So plastic tool. That gets out of the way. And now our um, now I'm able to see, and it's difficult to see, but I'm able to see the cable wrap up underneath our power switch. So I can go ahead and take these two screws out, and I'll be able to uh, work with it from there. These two screws for the power cable bracket, the retainer, they're going into the metal housing, uh, the aluminum housing. And uh, they go in at an angle, of course, and uh, I did have a problem the last time with getting them in straight. You're going into a soft aluminum, so you just want to be careful that you don't accidentally go in crooked and strip it. Okay, so now I've come to the point where I'm going to pull this power switch out. And with the camera removed, there's just a black plastic bezel that sits in there loose. So he comes out of there. And you can set him aside. And at this point, the switch part will uh, come out. Um, the uh, the mechanical portion of the switch that's up in here, it's, it's still rather difficult to see. I'll try and put a light on it. Um, yeah, it's a little better. It's got a. Um, <clears throat> you can see there's a metal bar that. That sits underneath the uh, sits behind the the switch, and I, I suppose that's for putting it in, helping it be located. Um, so you're gonna there's there's people that tell you whatever you do, don't take that thing out. Um, but you know it's not that much of a problem really. But no, it's yeah. There's a little little bar here that sits here that that rests in the downward position. A little lever and just helps you grab it and get it out of there. But again, these switches, as long as everything is seated back where it belongs, when you go to assemble it, it'll be fine. And, uh, and that's all there is really to it. It's a time consuming process. There it is. It does have a little um, foamy almost piece of adhesive for the cable. Which uh, you can reuse that. Uh, I don't know if you're going to ever be able to find that if you wanted to buy it. Um, it's going to be important that you get these little switches located properly. So they have um, they have a couple of small dots that are difficult to see. There they are on either side, and then underneath, of course, there's um, two locating holes. Not that it's going to really slide into those holes, but um, you can kind of eyeball from the back side and get an idea where the reliefs are on the other side of the cable, so uh, it'll help you locate it a little bit better. So what you're looking at now is the new cable being fitted to the power button bracket, the back side of the bracket. You can see I've, 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 I've attached it, and I've also reattach the little foam rubber tape piece that goes underneath it to help secure that cable. And then I use my heat gun to heat it up the assembly um, just to make sure that glue is completely activated. And move on to the next piece. So what I've done to this point now is I, I took the bracket, I fed it up underneath this metal piece here, this flange, and screwed it down snug and um, it all went together very nicely. I did remove one piece of the uh, adhesive backing so from this part of the cable here so that it would lay down nicely for me. After I snug the screws down and make sure the switch will activate, I have had one where I had the screws snug and the switch was in the depressed position so I had to back the screws off and fix that. Um, so next I'm going to go through and I'm going to get my bracket assembly set up so that this is all wrapped up in here and then work the cable back into the housing. So what I'm doing right now is I've got my power switch mounted to the bracket 
and now I'm taking off the two volume switches and as you can see there's um, in the bracket there's two holes on that right side I've taken that switch out which would be I guess the down volume the up volume switch is still there and there's a little foam rubber piece that's in between the two to locate it so I'm just taking those off by heating the bracket up a little bit with the gun and then I'm using uh, just some tweezers to pull the old switch off and then I'll wrap the new switches in place removing the uh, adhesive backing first of course okay so what you're seeing now is I've just kind of placed everything where it belongs um, the next step is going to be uh, to finish removing the the backing here at this part of the cable so I can finish wrapping it around the housing and then there'll be backing removed here that'll attach it to the back here and then it will progress up just like this across and finish um, you want to make sure that this area here is done correctly because there has to be enough room to get the camera back in place without uh, damaging or creasing this cable if possible since the purpose of this is to try to bring up those areas that are catchy um, as I'm putting this the camera bracket or housing back in there with the camera um, to get it in there properly it actually slides in underneath the card there the digital card so um, there's a screw there on the left that holds it and then the uh, you want to kind of so slide that in there in such a way so that it ends up underneath the uh, circuit card and then it'll fit properly and you'll be able to attach your camera and then put your bracket on all right so this is the camera housing mounted properly you can see I've got the cable attached on the lat on the right it should click into place you can use your splunging tool to make sure that's in all the way and my screw is um, not quite tightened down yet I'm going to put that bracket on next make sure that it locates everything properly and then it'll be good to go I know it looks like the locating hole on the right is there's something not right there but it's just an illusion uh, there's a little bit of um, material in there that uh, is used for locking the screws down it's actually lined up perfectly so I'll go ahead and put that bracket in and that'll take care of the switch here so now the brackets down you'll see here uh, towards me there's a, a slot where the cover uh, fits into sort of a cog really and then the bracket swings up over the top and uh, then you screw it down it puts a little bit of pressure on the camera which is right below it to keep it localized and from vibrating and now I'll move on to uh, finishing up the rest of this uh, cable. All right, so what you're seeing now is I put my little brackets back together. Um, I had a little bit of a hiccup with the, uh, the volume bracket. It just didn't feel like it was going in properly. It wasn't going in as far as it should, and that's because it was being held up by the uh, mechanical portion of the switch. It just really wasn't seated properly. Once that fell into place, it all went together very easily so I've tightened the screws and made sure that the switches are working I mean I can hear them so the next step I'm just going to finish wrapping the uh, cable around the housing and and uh, I'll clip in the last piece and then that then it will be done and there you have it job completely done um, everything's reattached the uh, so here you can see that the this cable here where it's coming up over the top and here again are the two areas where it's greatly exposed so if you're in here you're trying to remove the adhesive from the glass you're right here as you come across of course it's going to be very easy to catch that <laughs> and tear it um, and then the adhesive picks up right here so the idea is to try to get in here in such a way and you can see where the switches are you want to come in between the switches separate and then you want to come over on this side and separate but not get too far into this area here so yeah same right here you got to be particularly careful and try to stay high 
in this area in separation, you can see there really isn't much danger over here uh, when you're doing separation. So hopefully um, this, uh, this helps you in some way. Um, hopefully you don't ever have to do it.